All right, guys, welcome to 5 and 5. This is a test to see how this goes. Uh, the pilot episode, if you will, uh, where I'll be drinking beer for five minutes and then talking about something random that someone requested for five minutes. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, today's beer that we'll be drinking is a, you don't know if you can read this, so I'm going to read it for you, a strawberry double marbles milkshake style double India, India pale ale with strawberries and vanilla. 8% alcohol by volume. So for the duration of this video, I'll be drinking this beer. Um, yeah. So uh, just a quick tip that I like to, uh, I'd like to give you guys. Um, when you have something that's fruited, um, either in heavenly fruit, heavily fruited or lightly fruited or what have you, um, I like to just give it like a little bit of swirl, you know? You never know how long the can's been kind of chilling. Um, there might be some sediment on the bottom. Um, and I kind of like to get the yeast back into suspension, right? I don't like to just kind of leave it on the bottom and all that stuff will kind of settle back down as you're drinking anyways. Um, but this will make sure that the, the strawberry flavor or the fruit flavor kind of uh, distributes throughout the beer, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open this guy up. Give it a nice pour. Oh yeah, look at that color, fantastic. And you can see at the bottom, it's like a little bit heavier there, right? You can see some of the particulate coming through. Um, that's fine, right? Some people aren't into it. I don't mind at all. Um, in fact, some cans will have you not pour them into, uh, into glasses because people can be a little squeamish about particulate in their beer. Um, like Hetty Topper is a really good example of that. They say, like, don't pour it out of, the, um, out of the, the can because they don't want you to see particulate and get squeamish about it. Not the case here. Um, so we're gonna start by smelling the beer. Oh my God, it smells like strawberry ice cream, like the best uh, strawberry ice cream, right? That you could think of. I, I think of like when I get a, a thing of Neapolitan ice cream, one of those tubs, uh, and I ignore the vanilla and I ignore the chocolate and I just eat the strawberry uh, ice cream. That was, that was pretty much my experience growing up. Um, I don't love the sight of it, right? It looks a little bit, you can kind of see it's, it's really opaque. Um, it's got like little clumps and stuff in it, which is not super sightly. It's kind of got like a little bit of a, of a strawberry-ish tinge to it, but it's not really a, a, a lovely looking beer, I would say. Um, so I think it loses a couple of points there. Um, let's go ahead and give her a taste. Oh yeah, babe. Doing my Emerald Lagasse there. Um, just a fantastic strawberry flavor. Um, and then there's a good amount of hops uh, as part of the milkshake that really kind of distribute through your, your palate after the strawberry sweetness and the vanilla um, kind of dissipates. It's a really, really cool, like sweet and then bitter aftertaste, um, but the bitter is not overpowering. It kind of almost makes you want to take another drink uh, to get that sweetness to, to kind of counter the bitterness. Um, so it really sets you up for the next drink, I feel like. Um, let's try the mouthfeel here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take a mouthful of beer and kind of swish it around like, like, it's, uh, like it's mouthwash, which is kind of gross, but I'm going to do it. It's got a nice body to it. Um, it froths up really nice when you kind of get some uh, movement around it. Um, and it's got a good, I think I would say a good, good kind of feel to it. Um, it's not really too thin. It's got a good kind of, uh, kind of sipping quality to it. Uh, but it does also lend itself well to, you know, you pour the whole beer, like if you get a mouthful of beer that doesn't feel like you have like, like tar or whatever in your mouth or like a mouthful of dough or what have you. Um, that would be, that'd be awful. Um, I'm take another sip here. Mm. I would say that I find this to be an extremely pleasurable beer to drink. Um, it just, every time I get a can of strawberry marbles, it just feels like it's just an amazing, amazing experience drinking it. Um, and every batch has a little bit of difference to it. This one's a double, for example. Um, I don't believe they're always double. And sometimes they have a little bit more uh, hop flavor characteristic to it, a little, little less strawberry. Um, this one's very strawberry. This one's got a lot of alcohol that kind of helps that uh, strawberry flavor kind of uh, diffuse through the, uh, the beer and kind of get extracted. Um, I don't think I talked about the brewery. This is more brewery in uh, Lake Villa. Lake Villa, no, Villa Park. I always get that wrong. Uh, my buddy brings me over beer. He works for the company. 
Um, and they probably make some of the best beer in Chicago. So if you're ever in Chicago and looking for a brewery to go to, um, highly recommend to check out more. Okay, so that's my five minutes of talking about beer. Uh, we're going to take another sip, and then we'll move on to my random topic. Which today is, as you may have noticed from my little dudes over here, miniatures. So during COVID, I got into miniature painting. Um, and it's been a really fun hobby, I have to say. Um, I don't think, I didn't think I would ever really be into it. And you can see, like, it, just kind of looking at this to me, when I seen uh, folks that had painted miniatures, super, super daunting, I would say. Um, seemed like a lot of time and effort went into it, and I never thought that I would want to do that. Um, and uh, having painted some miniatures, I can now confirm that it is a lot of time and effort. Um, but I do want to do that uh, because it's super, super, super relaxing. Um, and I'm just kind of picking up a couple miniatures that I've done. This is uh, like an orc marauder. Um, I think these are mostly from a Warhammer set. Um, well, actually, they're all from a beginner, begin to paint set. Um, but I think they're intended for Warhammer. Um, which is definitely a hobby I don't want to get into, right? I don't want to go down the, the plastic crack um, addiction type uh, uh, of, of the, the mini painting, which I may have already failed. But, uh, you know, whatever. It's fun. Uh, taking another sip of beer there. Uh, I've got the skeleton. This is the first figurine that I painted or the first miniature that I painted. Um, really, really cool little guy here. Um, to, I would say it takes a couple hours per miniature. Um, and, you know, depending on sort of how much detail you want to put into it. The cool thing about it is you really get what you put into it, right? You can go through and you could probably paint a miniature pretty quickly. Um, and not worry too much about the details, particularly when you're starting out, right? It's a really, I think, I would say it's deceptively beginner friendly um, because you don't necessarily have to be really good at anything other than just, you just need to have time, right? And you need to care about, about actually finishing the job. Um, I found it really akin to like an adult coloring book with contour, right? Instead of being on like a flat, uh, flat sheet of paper, um, I got to just kind of paint around like a, like a figure. Um, and I actually started with a starting set, which I would recommend. Um, I'm not paid to promote this product in any way, but I would just, I would say I, I on a whim, just bought like an all-in-one kit uh, to begin painting. This comes with brushes and three miniatures that you can paint. I mean, you can see I did pretty good. Like, those look pretty similar, right? Like, like look at this guy. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, if you're looking for like a Christmas gift or something, or you just need a new hobby because you have a shit ton of time and you're, you know, wasting it away on Reddit or playing games and you want something productive to do, I'd highly recommend uh, painting miniatures. Um, the kit comes with everything you need, comes with paints, comes with brushes. Um, and uh, that's really all you need. It talks through, uh, it comes with a nice little booklet, actually, which was super helpful. Um, and the booklet will take you through, um, like, which brush to use, some techniques. It'll talk about, like, what colors that you wanna paint your minis. Um, it'll kind of give you like pictures as you're going through it. It was super, super cool. I really, really, really thought it was a fun thing. Um, so now uh, my plan is to uh, paint minis and drink beer every weekend, right? That's that's how I do my relaxation. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's a fantastic hobby. Um, I've got a couple like really good ideas for minis I wanna paint. Um, the problem becomes once you start painting minis, you start getting really, really, really into um, things that have minis. So I've become super obsessed with board games that have minis now, regardless of whether I actually want to play the board game or not. If you have great minis, there's a really good chance that I'm going to purchase your game just so I can paint your minis. Um, I haven't gotten around to painting the Gloomhaven minis yet, which is the board game that I'm currently playing with my family. Um, but that's, that's like a big, big plan for me is to, to sort of paint all of those minis and have fun with those. Um, and then, you know, we'll see, maybe I'll end up painting a, a bunch of kingdom death monsters, um, which would, you know, which would be a lifetime's worth of endeavor. Ooh, this beer is fantastic. We're going to take another sip here. Oh yeah. Very good. Um, yeah, I would, I would strongly suggest that uh, if you guys have any interest in painting minis um, or if you've ever even um, uh, had in, you know, if you have miniatures just kind of sitting around, you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, 
um, give it a shot. This kit's only 30 bucks, you know? Small investment. Um, so that will be uh, it for five and five this time around. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, go ahead and let me know what you'd like me to talk about next time. If you've got uh, a beer you'd like me to try, um, a style, or if you've got a topic that you'd like me to talk about, any random topic, I'm just going to drink and let the buzz occupy the five minutes of time um, and on the topic. So hope you all had fun. Appreciate you. Cheers.